Well, Wednesday marked World Obesity Day, and the World Obesity Federation says if current trends continue, 2.7 billion adults will be overweight or obese by 2025. But the problem extends beyond adults. A new study says the problem of childhood obesity is growing at an alarming rate. Dr. Michael Rosenbaum is a professor of pediatric medicine at Columbia University, and he directs the school's FIT Center, which is dedicated to helping children control their weight. Dr. Rosenbaum, welcome. Thank you. So why are we seeing such a spike in childhood obesity? Well, you're not seeing the spike only in childhood obesity. Mm -hmm. It's in obesity across the board. The simple explanation is that we're making more calorically dense, high-calorie high fructose corn syrup foods more readily available. Everything's being supersized mm -hmm. at the same time as you can now take the bus or trans other transportation instead of walking to work, school, etc. But it's much more than that. The problems that lead to the presentation of obesity in childhood and all its complications, mm -hmm. things like type 2 diabetes that you thought were adult diseases, which we're now seeing more and more in children, really begins long before you're born. There are things that happen in the womb related to how much your mom weighs before she becomes pregnant, how much weight she gains during pregnant, how many antibiotics she takes during the pregnancy, how much stress she's under. And these are all things that, that we tend to ignore that impact your risk of becoming an obese child. The other thing we forget is that all the metabolic groundwork for all these degenerative diseases of adulthood really begins in childhood. You don't suddenly develop hypertension or type 2 diabetes when you're 35 years old. It's a consequence of everything you did up until that time. Wow, so tell us more about the FIT Center and what the research is that you found. So thank you very much. I'm mm -hmm. glad you asked about mm -hmm. that. The FIT Center stands for Families Improving Health Together. Mm -hmm. It's a program at Columbia University that's funded by New York State and it really falls well within the sort of World Obesity Day mission, which is to treat obesity now and avoid the consequences later. So the best time to do that is in childhood. So yeah. we're taking children who have an early onset of obesity, and we have a team that consists of people from all the different branches of medicine where obesity has its complications, endocrinology, gastroenterology, cardiology, et cetera, so that for the obese child, instead of going to one doctor and then having to wait three months to get an appointment with another doctor, mm -hmm. they see all the different specialties, or at least discussed by all those different specialties at once. It's cost effective. We're finding that about 80% of the children we see already have at least one problem related to their obesity. Wow, that's a lot. And, and that the, the uh, goal is here to create sort of a database so that we could figure out what the best treatment for a child or an adult is just by looking. You have one or two obese parents, whatever. The best treatment for you is this, even if it's bariatric surgery. Mm, wow. Well, what kind of strain is this problem of obesity putting on our health care system? It's bad. So we yeah. currently spend over $200 billion a year in health care costs that are directly attributable to obesity. If you could take care of obesity, you could knock out 60% of the cases of type 2 diabetes. This number is projected to double or triple, at least, in the next 10 years. Then you throw in about a 60 to $70 billion weight loss industry where people are buying tummy jigglers, mm -hmm. new diets, right. new exercise plans, whatever, that are completely ineffective. And then on top of that, you can add in all the missed work days mm. and go on and on. So the burden cost. on the healthcare center system is huge. Yeah. Well, let me ask you about what you discussed before, this notion of the factors are many that lead to obesity. But what about we hear about these predisposed sort of genetic you know, um, systems that some people may have. And that is something that really can profoundly affect, we've heard, whether or not a person becomes obese. Sure, but these are risk factors. There are well over 50 genes that have been identified as related to obesity. Some of these genes are very common, occurring in as many as 70% of the population. Others are quite rare. Hmm. You have to realize that we are not, you know, we've been around for about 300,000 years. And for most of our past, it would be extremely advantageous to be able to store extra calories as fat mm -hmm. when food is plenty so that you could survive and reproduce even when food was scarce. Mm -hmm. 
so our, we're enriched with genes that really favor the storage of calories as fat and weight gain. We don't have many that protect us against, protect us against that weight gain. So these genes and how much they express themselves, just like how much your predisposition to skin cancer might express mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. depends on you and the environment in which these genes live with you. So what are some ways to counteract this, especially when you look at children? So there's a lot of, again, goes along with the World Obesity Day theme. There are a lot of studies that show that intervening early in childhood has a much better chance of success in the long term than intervening with people who are already obese. What does that mean, intervening at a childhood level there? Excuse me? What does that mean? So what would that look like then when you're talking about intervening for a child? So you should begin looking at a child's diet, whether they're fat or thin, at about age one. Mm. Even before then, you, breastfeeding seems to more recently be shown to be helpful in preventing obesity. You encourage good health habits starting early. You don't wait until they have a weight problem. One of the nice things about this is that regular exercise and a healthy diet is good for everybody, whether you're fat or thin. You shouldn't be denied it just because you don't have a weight problem. Mm -hmm. You identify children who are at risk based on family history, based on their rate of weight gain, and you intervene early. And those interventions are much more likely to lead to better health habits in adulthood and long-term disease prevention. All right, really important information. Dr. Rosenbaum, thank you so much for stopping thank by. You.